Hey guys, it's Bright tonight. We're here with a little continuation to the conversation that I've been having regarding Gypsy Rose. There has been some new information that has come to light and I also wanted to share what is Gypsy up to current day in her social media journey. So either way, if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so the first thing I want to react to with y'all is Miss Gypsy came out with this video, and I think it's very interesting. The amount of discussion that has been going on around her and kind of what is she doing with her platform, what's really going on here, a lot of people are, you know, kind of changing their stance on her, and she comes out with this video today, which is the 16th of January. So let's listen to what she has to say, and I want you all to ask yourselves, is this something that you needed to hear from Gypsy Rose, or is it something you already knew and or could have found within five seconds on Google? So let's hear what she has to say, and then we will uh, continue. Hey everyone, this is Gypsy. So I know it's been a crazy last two weeks. I had a documentary, I had an ebook, um, and I had to promote those projects that I'm super proud of. Um, but now things are starting to settle down in my regular normal life. So I wanted to kind of bring things back to the point of why I'm on social media to begin with. So the whole point is to spread awareness about Munchausen syndrome by proxy. So if you know my story, you're kind of familiar with a little bit about it. Um, but what I want to share with you is the definition and symptoms to look for. So Munchausen syndrome by proxy or Munchausen by proxy is a psychological disorder marked by attention seeking behavior by a caregiver through those or who are in their care. Munchausen by proxy is a relatively rare behavioral disorder and affects a primary caregiver, often the mother. The person with Munchausen by proxy gains attention by seeking medical help for made up symptoms of the child in their care. As a healthcare provider, strive to identify what causes the child's symptoms. The deliberate actions of the parent or caregiver can often make symptoms worse. So <clears throat> here are some warning signs to kind of look for. Is a parent or caregiver usually a mother? Maybe a healthcare professional? Is very friendly and cooperative with healthcare providers? Appears quite concerned, some may seem overly concerned about their child. May suffer from Munchausen syndrome, a related disorder in which a person repeatedly acts as if they have a physical or mental illness when they are not really sick. The child has a history of many hospitalizations, often with strange set of symptoms worsening of the child's symptoms generally is reported by the parent and is not witnessed by a health a healthcare professional staff. The child's reported condition and symptoms do not agree with the results of test. There may be more than one unusual illness or death of a child in the family. The child's condition improves in the hospital, but symptoms reoccur when they are at home. So these are things to look for. Um, keep in mind that there is a little bit of a gray area <clears throat> in this because what I'm seeing is there seems to be this imbalance of the healthcare professionals not touching at all, or they are labeling innocent parents with this disorder. And so I watched a documentary recently called Take Care of Maya. Um, and watching it, it made me upset on so many levels because in that case, they were too overzealous with wanting to put this disorder on a parent um, when the parent was actually innocent. And for me, nobody caught it at all. So where does this balance begin? Let's have that conversation. So as you can hear there, she gives the textbook definition as to what Munchausen syndrome by proxy is. And the caption says, Introduction into a discussion about Munchausen syndrome by proxy. This video is a discussion piece about mental health awareness. Please stay on topic. So in other words, um, if you don't like me, shut your mouth. This is not the place to voice your uh, criticisms of me as a public figure. Um, now, her video was very surface level. And I don't know about y'all, but if you're following the Gypsy Rose case, 
I can guarantee you knew everything that just came out of her mouth because that was the entire center point to what the Gypsy Rose case was about. That's how a lot of people, I said for me myself, I discovered what that was because of the HBO special uh, or documentary, Mommy Dead and Dearest. I didn't know what that was up until that point. So it's very nice that she is kind of taking a few minutes out of her day to read the textbook definition of what this is. But I also think that timing is very intriguing. A lot of people over the last, especially over the last week, have changed their tone when it comes to Gypsy Rose and how they feel about her having this social media presence and going on these uh, press tours and podcasts and all of this kind of stuff. And now she wants to come out with this video today. I always find one thing that I can say about social media and all of the stuff that I consume is I always find timing to be very telling. So that's what Gypsy Rose has been up to, reading the actual definition of Munchausen syndrome by proxy. The bombshell, there's two bombshells that people have been discussing at length. And these two bombshells have had a lot of people change their opinion of Gypsy Rose. Number one is that Nicholas Godijohn, who is, you know, her former partner whom she conspired with to kill her mother, when he was questioned by police, he said, as a very matter of fact, that Dee Dee was stabbed four times. Four times. It was very black and white for him. Four times, the number is four. That's it. That's my final answer. Her autopsy report showed 17 wounds. And unfortunately, what this is causing a lot of people to do is say, well, where did all those other wounds come from? What is really going on here? Because number one, either Nick is lying or number two, there was more involvement by the other party, the other party being Gypsy, allegedly, in what her mother experienced at the end of her life. Does that make sense? Is that a red flag for you as somebody who is following this case? Would that kind of make you stop and scratch your head? Because for me, it definitely made me stop and say, whoa, 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 like, the math ain't math in, and I find that to be very, very troubling. Where did those other wounds come from? Or is Nick just lying and, you know, it, it's always Nick's fault? Like Gypsy says, like, I'm not the one who committed the crime. It's Nick. It's, you know, that's why he is rotting in prison and Gypsy Rose is over here doing podcasts and, you know being called queen by her parasocially connected fans. I was sent a very interesting Gypsy Rose Blanchard article this morning. Gypsy Rose Blanchard is losing supporters as they catch her in lies. Here's what you need to know. And I believe that is true because if you've been following Gypsy Rose Blanchard since her release from prison, I'm sure you have seen that the social media tides have been turning and it's a lot less yes queen and a lot more cringe queen. The headline of this article reads, Gypsy Rose Blanchard, con artist or victim? The article goes on to outline some inconsistencies in Gypsy Rose's story. It asks a lot of the questions that we have been asking. Like, if she had access to the internet and a secret telephone, why didn't she ever call for help or reach out to her father and tell him what was going on? And if she had all of these doctor's appointments, why didn't she just stand up, show them that she could walk, and let them know that something very wrong was going on with her mother? However, this part of the article right here caught my attention big time because I haven't heard anyone really discuss this. They're talking about Nick Godijohn, Gypsy's ex-boyfriend who actually on a live Gypsy's mom, Dee Dee. Nick told investigators that he stabbed her mother four times. He was sure about the number. Dee Dee suffered 17 stab wounds. Most people believe that Blanchard stabbed her mother 13 times and lied to police about it to get a lighter jail sentence. Now it says most people believe this, but I don't know who most people are because like I said, I had never heard this theory before and it's quite interesting. So I went back and I checked Nick Godijohn's interrogation tapes. And uh, I just was in the room, so in the back. In the back, just random. Yes. Do you know how many times you stabbed her? Uh, four. You stabbed her four? Yeah, four times. Okay. The fourth one, I, I felt it go into, I think it might have been her lungs. Okay. Because it was harder to get out. Okay. 
Did it take one hand to get it out, two hands? Uh, I had to yank it out. Okay. With one hand. Okay. So it did. So the others came out easy, but this one, that one kind of came out harder? Yep. Okay. And so, um, you only stabbed her four times? Are you sure about that? Well, as, as in stabbing, I stabbed her four times. Okay. But I did actually cut her one other time besides that. Okay. Where'd you cut her at? On the back of her neck. Okay. So as you heard, he does say it was only four times. Five times if you count the cut on the back of the neck. And when he's asked again, are you sure it was only four times? He says, yes, it was four times. Now, if you remember Gypsy's side of the story, she said she was hiding in the bathroom, covering her ears while all this was going down because she didn't want to hear any of it. Nick Godijohn does confirm that she was in the bathroom, but he says she was in there shaving her legs. And she was doing that in preparation for what happened directly after the unaliving of Dee Dee Blanchard, which if you know, you know, her and Nick went to Gypsy's bedroom and did the deed. Throughout his confession, Nick maintains that he acted alone. What do you guys think about this theory? You think it's possible that Nick is only saying he acted alone to protect Gypsy? And do you think there's any merit to this theory that the unaliving of Dee Dee Blanchard was a tag team effort between Nick and Gypsy? The second bombshell that a lot of people are discussing is the fact that Gypsy Rose has always had the stance and her own argument of, I can never hurt my mother. It was never in me. I couldn't do that. Even if I was forced, it would just be, you know, not within my, not within my makeup to be able to harm my mother. That's why I had to have Nick help me with it. However, in her lifetime documentary series that was just released, one of the new pieces of information is that Gypsy shot at her mom with what she did not know was a BB weapon. I have to be very careful with the words that I say on YouTube. So if you didn't know that it was a BB weapon and you aimed that at your mother and engaged the thing that was supposed to happen then why are you standing on the side of, oh, I would never, ever, ever be able to hurt my mother? <clears throat> That's very concerning to a lot of people. It's very confusing. It's very, um, what other secrets are you keeping? What other secrets are you, hold are you holding that we might find out in the next interview, in the next, next podcast, in the next um, article that has come out? Do you see what I mean? It's kind of like how many things are secret? Secrets are very concerning for the public that is consuming all of this content. Um, people don't like being falsely advertised to, lied to, misled, all of the above. And I think that the amount of half-truths, secrets, math that ain't math in all of the above is really making people say, I'm really not sure about Gypsy Rose and what's going on here. I'm Fancy and you're watching the Good Wives Network and happy Sunday. I'm on my way to church this morning, but um, something came into my head last night about Gypsy that I just couldn't, I couldn't put down and it just kept bothering me. Since watching the Lifetime special, and we now have this new story about the BB gun. I, mm, that BB gun story. Now, I've heard that BB gun story any number of times. In fact, that BB gun story is even included in the medical files. Whose files? You guessed it, Dr. Beckerman's files. He mentions it in there about her being shot. There is no police report we looked. So, here's my question for y'all. Which one is it, Gypsy? Were you too scared that you could, and you could never think of possibly killing your mother yourself? Or did you pick up a BB gun and shoot her well before you met Nick, which meant that you knew you were absolutely capable of killing herself? Which one is it? Which lie are we supposed to believe? What I do know is that you used every skill that your mother taught you to seek out a patsy and convince him to murder your mother. That's what I do know. And on Monday night, Colleen and I are working on an outline for it. So if you haven't followed Colleen, I went ahead and put a video up so that you could go ahead and follow her. She needs a thousand followers just so that she can come on video, guys. So if we can get her there by Monday, that'd be great. Um, I have both reports um, 
Nick, apparently, I saw something coming about out about his diminished capacity. I've not watched it yet, so I'm going to watch that today before we talk on Monday. But we are going to go ahead and go through both of the assessments that the pros prosecution side did and the defense side did of his autism, of his uh, his capacity to understand of his IQ. And we're gonna go through um, some of the questions and answers. They're very thought provoking guys. Um, when you read these, I think it will give you a better understanding of him, but I do wanna hear about the diminished capacity that I saw earlier today. Um, thanks guys, I can't wait to talk with you on Monday. It will be all about Nick, completely all about Nick. Um, so have a great Sunday and we'll talk later, bye. Gypsy Rose Blanchard apparently shot her mother. She revealed in the new docuseries that she's filmed that she apparently tried to run away one time, and when her mother found her and brought her home, she shot her mother with what she believed was a real gun that turned out to be a BB gun. Gypsy shares that she met a man named Dan who was in his 30s at a Comic-Con event when Gypsy Rose thought she was 15 years old. She ended up forming a relationship with this man, messaging him back and forth, and she eventually decided she was going to run away. She ended up finding a Medicaid card that proved that she was actually 19 and not 15. So she went to her mother and said she wanted to live her own life. They got in a huge fight, and Gypsy ended up running away to meet Dan. Gypsy said once she returned home that her mother beat her and restrained her and tied her to her bed and also apparently put a voodoo hex on her. Gypsy says she stopped talking with Dan, but she soon planned to run away again. Her mother found out about the plans and confronted Gypsy. And while they were having their conversation, apparently her mother set a gun on the table that she had just purchased. Gypsy didn't know that it was actually a BB gun and she grabbed the gun and started shooting at her mother. She said she shot until she couldn't shoot it anymore. She said most of them hit her mother, some hit the wall, and she soon realized that they were just superficial wounds. Her mother did apparently need to receive medical treatment for these wounds, and Gypsy did show the paperwork during the docuseries for this. Her mother, however, told everyone that they had apparently been robbed at gunpoint and that her wallet was taken and she was shot with a BB gun by an unknown person. I said from the beginning, I am not anti-Gypsy Rose, but I am anti her becoming the next social media sensation or a celebrity off of what she actively, you know, orchestrated. That has been my place. I don't think that being the next sensation is going to be good for her or anyone around her. And, you know, we all have a little bit of a different stance on this. Some people are completely anti-Gypsy Rose. She's a liar. She's a grifter. She is, you know, one through 500 as to why she shouldn't be doing what she's doing. Um, and then others are still saying slay queen and all of this kind of stuff. I'm somewhere in the middle as I usually am, but I wanted to bring this update to you guys. The last clip I want to include is from Nina and she made a video why Gypsy Rose could land herself back in prison. So I will insert that as the end of this video. And I can't wait to see what you guys have to say. Where do you kind of stand on all of this? Are you kind of in the middle where I am? Are you on one side or the other? Um, I'm really interested. My last Gypsy Rose video was a really good discussion in the comments that I saw happening. So I'm also interested to see what this video brings. But for now, I will let you guys go. So if you like the video, please leave a like in the comments. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Gypsy Rose could end up back in trouble, and let me tell you why. She pled guilty to second-degree murder eight years ago. She took this plea instead of going to court so that she only would have to spend 10 years in prison and she would have the possibility of parole after eight years. Which means after eight years, she's eligible to go before the parole board and basically plead her case as to why she should be out. When you plead your case in front of a parole board, basically you're explaining to them what you've learned from your mistakes you admit to your crime, and you say how you're gonna move on and make the best of your life. And essentially explaining how you are not a threat to society and you could basically do better in this world after you committed your crime. And they should grant you this parole based off of the fact that you've learned your lesson, you have accepted your crime, and you are going to do better. Gypsy Rose went before the parole board and did this. And as she did this, she was granted parole. She was released out of prison December 28th of 2023. Now in this clip I'm getting ready to show you is where Gypsy Rose has went wrong. I don't associate myself as a murderer because if you think about it, yes, I had a part to play in it. I 
requested, I asked Nick for help. And how that all conversation started was, you know, he was saying that he would protect me from anyone. I said, anyone. He said, yes. I said, even my mother. He said, yes. And then the, the plan kind of formed from there. But he's the one that did the actual kill, not me. I can't kill anyone. That's why he's in trouble to begin with, because he's the one that did it. So when they say I'm a murderer, I don't identify as that. So after being released from prison, she's basically saying, well, I really pled guilty to this charge, but I don't think I was guilty. And Nicholas was, or is guilty rather. So she's essentially telling the parole board right now that yes, I know that I said that I committed this crime. And I know that I said that I would be a better person and I have learned from this crime. But you know what, I've decided that I didn't commit this crime and I'm not guilty of it. And in my opinion, where she really went wrong is coming out and making all these interviews and having this docu-series and signing up for this new reality TV show and, um, you know, f going all over the country, doing these interviews with these news stations. It was a bad idea. Now, if I was Gypsy's friend, what I would have advised her to do was to do one interview when she got out. And that one interview that I would have told her to do, I would have told her to state her crime and basically say she's not trying to rehash the past. She knows that she's guilty of this crime, and she's trying to move forward in a positive direction, and she really doesn't anticipate doing any other interview, in interviews at this moment. That would have kind of let the media know and everybody else know she was going to lay low. Rather than coming out immediately and going for like publicity and fame, it's not really a good idea considering she's still on parole. And in this interview, if the media would have asked her anything about Nicholas Gudajan, what she should have said is, I wish we would have done things differently. Unfortunately, we didn't, and here we are, and we've had to pay for our mistakes, and left it at that. Anything else that they had to ask, I would have told her to just state she didn't want to rehash the past. That way, she was taking accountability for setting Nicholas up to it and basically stated that she wished things would have been different and she moved on. Very simple. Now, Nicholas Godijan is going for an appeal, and I'm sure part of his appeal he will be able to use every word that she has put out there in the media. And if you really listen to both stories, his story sounds more likely. I could be wrong, but her story has changed. His story has stayed very consistent. He's like, this is what it is. And, you know, obviously he has autism and he is schizophrenic. And really, you know, he was manipulated. Regardless of if anyone thinks he was or not, he is autistic. And autistic people go from white or black. There is no in between. And he feels things 10 times harder than other people. So the fact that he felt like she was in danger, he felt like he needed to save her and he did that. And from that point on, I would have stayed completely out of the media out of harm's way, I would have laid low with my new husband and mind my business. I would not have even gotten on social media, I would not have had a social media account, um, because obviously the parole board and her parole officer is able to see all of her social media and everything everyone else is saying about her on social media. Even if she, other people were speaking about her on social media, if she didn't say much, there would be nothing for anyone to go after and say, oh, she said this, 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 and here's where I think she missed it. So now she has opened herself up to a ton of things. And at this point, I'm sure she has gotten some advice to lay low because I don't know if you noticed, she hasn't really been making videos. She's posted a couple of pictures of her and her family, but she really hasn't done anything else other than that. Social media is also a blessing and a curse. And the reason why I say it's a blessing and a curse is because social media can help free someone, but it can also help um, prove why someone's lying or everything's gonna come out in the open on social media. So essentially on social media, she has sort of trapped herself by saying things that she shouldn't have said. And also in this podcast, she originally did. A lot of people did not see this podcast until um, people were posting clips on social media. So had she had stayed out of like any podcasts, any interviews, anything like that, no one would be able to say she said anything and that way everything would have been fine. Her laying low, she should lay low until she gets off parole. So this new reality TV show that she's doing, Prison Brides, um, I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think the docuseries at this time was a good idea either. She's in a very pivotal moment in her life getting out and I wouldn't want anything to mess that up. Because think about it this way. If she gets bi-voted by her parole, all this money she's making, who is she married to and who's gonna get it? If she got released out of prison, her whole mindset should have been, I need to play chess and not checkers. And everything should have been a strategy. And I don't feel like that was the case. Because one thing we all know is one wrong move at this point for a gypsy could knock her right off the chessboard.